Oh, they're slowly going in the right direction here, and, uh, you know, they might need to put the, the medicine hat tigers on notice here when it comes to wild card spot. Here I am back home here with another episode of. Hi there, it's Brad Hornby here, back in my, you know, natural habitat here. Back at home in my world headquarters in Capitol Hill here, and at least back wearing some uh, Calgary hockey gear here. Another episode of my Calgary hip in and six. We're getting up to episode six here, where this time we'll talk about games 25 to 30 in the 2018-19 WHL regular season here, and uh, you know we're. Almost at the, you know, let's say we're about 35-40% of the way into their regular season here. Remember, they only play 68 games in the uh, WHL here compared to uh, previous years. It was 72 games, but uh, the WHL decided to uh, bring it down to 68 to more in line with the, the other leagues in the Canadian Hockey League network with the Ontario Hockey League and the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, so, uh, you know, I feel like the Calgary Hitmen are, they're slowly, uh, trending in the right direction here, we, as I go over my recaps here, they definitely, you know, where the obvious, uh, sources of offense come from, and, uh, you know, they're still, uh, not too sure who I would say is the number one goalie here, but I'm gonna say, as you see here, I, I think just like the Calgary Flames here, uh, their goaltending tandem has gotten a little better here as the season goes on here, despite maybe a little bit of a controversy. But anyway, let's uh, bring up my notes here and let's go over my Calgary Hitman and Six here. As uh, as I said, uh, I had my special on the road edition here. It just worked out that way, you know, with my upload schedule there and my coverage schedule there and. Uh, so now, now at least I'm back home and wearing my right car gear. I still don't own any uh, Hitman jersey yet, but uh, I'm sure throughout the season I'll, I'll rectify that and take advantage of my discount cards here. But uh, at least I got my my old school Kyrie Hitman hat here. So let's uh, start off with episode six here. So if we go back to uh, this will be game 25. This happened on Friday, November the 23rd. The, the Calgary Hitmen was still on their Pacific Northwest road trip here as they took on the Seattle, Sunbur Sun Se Seattle Thunderbirds. And all the Seattle talk recently and potential names because the NHL actually recently granted expansion to the Seattle team, which they're renovating the key arena there. But... Uh, this is the Seattle Thunderbirds, as this game happened at the Asco Show Center. 830 puck drop. And the Calgary Hitmen took care of the Thunderbirds with a 5-2 victory. Mark Kalistic and Luke Coleman each had two goals. Luke Coleman had an assist with his two goals, and uh, he also had a fight in this game. So uh, Luke Coleman with the, what do we say, the Gordy Howe hat trick. And... Uh, Carl Stankowski with the win had 24 saves here, so the, the Hitmen continue on with their Pacific Northwest road trip here with the win. And then game 26, it happened the next night on Saturday, November the 24th. The Calgary Hitmen were taking on Yusuf Alamaki's old team, the Tri-State Americans, which are based out of Kennewick, Washington here, and for the first time in the 2018-19 WHL season, a game involving the Calgary Hitmen needed a shootout, and unfortunately, the Calgary Hitmen was on the wrong end of a shootout and lost three to two here in a shootout. This game happened at the Toyota Center at the 8 p.m. puck drop, and all I can say is that uh, for the Hitmen, Riley Stotts and Carson Fook scored for the Calgary Hitmen, and the Tri-State Americans uh, they fought back in this game. Two goals in the third period, including scoring the tying goal with less than 
two minutes to go in the third period, that's usually always a, you know, sort of a backbreaker or momentum shift. And uh, this game was won in the third round of the shootout, so they didn't need to go to extra rounds or anything. The Hitmen uh, missed their two shots while uh, the Americans scored in rounds two and three. I uh, got Kyle, Kyle Olsen and Isaac Johnson both scored in the shootout for the Americans and Isaac Johnson had the shootout winner. Jack McDonton, which was a back-to-back -back night, he got 29 saves in the game in the shootout loss there. So, uh, you know, so far the Pacific Northwest road trip has still been more successful if you go back to my previous episode there. So the last game on this seven-game road trip which is game 27, which happened on Friday, November the 30th. The Calgary Hitmen were taking on, I have to say, the, the dreaded Red Deer Rebels, because uh, the Red Deer Rebels definitely uh, have the Calgary Hitmen's number this year, and that still definitely proved to be the case, because this was another game played at the MX Centrium. 7 p.m. puck drop, and uh, this is the fifth straight win that the Rebels had against the Calgary Hitmen this season with a 6-2 win. Basically the Rebels had a quick 4-0 lead in the first period and then both teams traded goals in the second and third period here. I mean uh, the big nights for the Red Deer Rebels here. Brandon Hagel had two goals and assist. Jeff DeWitt and Chris Douglas also had uh, two pairs, two goals for each for the Rebels here. The Calgary Hitmen got goals from uh, Luke Coleman and Mark Kalistic, the usual suspects here, but uh, you know, even though the Red Deer Rebels definitely have our number here, the Hitmen actually outshot the Rebels in this one with a margin of 45 to 23 in shots here. Ethan Anders for the Rebels made 43 saves in the victory for the Rebels, while Jack Benotton had 17 for the Hitmen, and uh, he was actually in for the whole game. He was in for all Six goals here, but uh, despite ending this seven-game road trip with a loss here, I'm going to say it was a fairly successful road trip with a 4-2-0-1 record here. Excuse me. So the Calgary Hitmen are now finally back home here. If you go to Game 28, happened on Saturday, December 1st here, taking on the Battle of Alberta with the Edmonton Oil Kings here, and uh, this was a 7 p.m. Puck drop last week at the Scotia Big South home here, and it definitely lived up to be a Bell Alberta with uh, the back and forth game here. I mean, the Oil King scored first and the tying goal in the first period. It was 2 2. And then the Hitman took a lead in the second period, and the Oil Kings tied it up in the third here. And then eventually the uh, Calgary Hitman scored the winner in overtime here. I uh, highlight here with the Gary Hitman is uh, Bryce Batter in the game, scored his uh, first goal of the season. Jay Kriske scored uh, two goals for the Gary Hitman in between, and uh, Caden Elder scored the overtime winner for the Hitman here. And uh, when it comes to the goalies here, both goalies definitely uh, showed up as Jake Monaghan made 29 saves in the win, and Todd Scott for the Oil Kings made 27 saves in the, in the loss here. And, Always seems to be a case, no matter what the records are, uh, you can just throw everything out the window when Calgary and Edmonton playing anything because it's all about Alberta pride here and uh, the Bell of Alberta. And you'll definitely see my, when I do my Calgary Stampeders this month bonus playoff edition episode. I mean, spoiler alert, we won. We won the Grey Cup in Edmonton, and man, that was sweet. So, uh, uh go. Go see that video when I get that video uploaded. So uh, that's the win against the Edmonton Oil Kings. So then the next afternoon here on game 29, it's happened on Saturday, Sunday, December the 2nd. The Calgary Hitmen were taking on the, the Moose Jaw Warriors here. This was a 4 p.m. puck drop at the Scotia Bank Cell home here. And uh, the Calgary Hitmen definitely took advantage of a big three goal second period. And, in this game, as they won this game 5-1, to one, Caden Elder scored two goals and assist, and James Malm, the guy that uh, they got from the Vancouver Giants earlier this season, also had two goals in this game. 
where he starts, he had four assists in this game, so he definitely was finding the plays, plays uh, setting up the goals there, and you know I can't discount Josh Prokop with uh, with uh, two assists, and then Igor Zamula had two goals in the or had a goal and assist from the blue line there, and uh, you know both teams uh, put 34 shots on net there, but ultimately what matters is the scoreboard when it comes to goals that. Uh, Calgary Hitman won this one 5-1. to one. Jack Manon had 33 saves in the victory here. So the to close out this segment here of games here for Episode 6, Game 30, which happened on Friday, December the 7th. The Calgary Hitman took on the uh, Swift Current Broncos here, who actually right now the Swift Current Broncos are the the basement dwellers in the WHL, but uh, this game actually was a little more exciting than you'd think when you look at the matchup here. I mean, I still think the Calgary Hitmen took advantage of the opponents, and they did win this game 3-2 to two at the end of the day, and they definitely really outshot the Broncos with a 45-13 game. I mean, the Broncos only took 13 shots in that here, but... Uh, you know, there also wasn't uh, too many penalties in this game. It's other than a fight and a delayed game, and it all happened in the third period. So it was a it was a clean game, but uh, you know, this game definitely was still won in dramatic fashion for the Calgary Hitmen. As the uh, Ethan Arook, he did score first for the you know Swift Current Broncos, and they had a one nothing lead there. And uh, it wasn't until four minutes to go in the second period that the uh, Calgary Hitman actually got on the board with this one as Riley Stotts scored for the Hitman. And believe it or not, the Union Swift Current Broncos actually took a 2 1 lead with eight minutes to go and we're at the eight minute mark of the third period. Yuna Kivinmini, if I say his name right, scored for the uh, Broncos, but then 42 seconds later, Igor Zamula tied it up. And then uh, Josh Prokop. Scored the go-ahead goal at 19:37 of the third period to take the 3-2 win, to do, take the game and win it 3-2. So definitely, despite the mismatch on the paper here, definitely was a lot more an exciting game than you would anticipate. Uh, can't uh, uh, yeah, still give Isaac Poulter credit for this game. The goalie for the Broncos, he stood on his head with uh, 42 saves here and. Uh, Jack Monaghan turned aside 11 for the victory here. So uh, after 30 games here, I mean, the Hitmen are just under 500 with uh, 13 wins, 14 losses, two overtime, you know, losses, and a shootout loss for 29 points here. I mean, if you compare it to the NHL, if you're under 500, you're pretty much done for. But with 22 teams in the WHL, 16 teams, Make the playoffs, they use the same format that there's two conferences, four divisions, top three teams in each division get a wild, you know, get in the playoffs and then the next two wild card spots get in. So how this breaks down is that right now the Calgary Hitmen are six points out of being in top three in the division, which the Oil Kings occupy that spot here, but I think the way to get into the playoffs for the Calgary Hitmen this year is Taking an eye on the wild card spot, they're actually still two points out of a wild card spot and have a game in hand against the Mazinette Tigers in the, uh, the Eastern Conference here. So uh, I'm going to say the Calgary Hitmen are, uh, you know, they're still within striking distance. And I say despite the fairly slow start and the fact that, you know, I think there were still a little more, a little bit of heightened expectations with the, the Steve Hamilton coaching hour with all the championship pedigree that uh, he came in when he worked with the Edmonton Oil Kings. But, uh, you know, I just feel like this team is slowly getting together here. And, uh, you know, maybe it could be overlooked if we get into the playoffs here. But uh, you got to remember we played 30 games and there's 38 more games to go here in the WHL season here. So, I, as I say, we're at least in the conversation for getting into uh, – a playoff spot here because if you look at the Eastern Conference here, I mean, there's three teams below the the Calgary Hitmen, and I think they're definitely 
all but done when it comes to the uh, playoff race there. So uh, I'm going to stay. We're, we're still hanging in there and still in the potential playoff conversation here. So let's look ahead to episode 7 here and uh, basically I'll sum up that the, the Calgary Hitmen have a couple busy weekends here and then now that we're into December here they'll have a little bit of a break here and then and then they'll play a couple games here before the New Year so they'll there'll be a much wider gap between episode 6 which is this one and episode 7 major to schedule here and this will be the last time that the Calgary Hitmen will be slightly ahead the Calgary Flames when it comes to episodes here because uh I mean, the Calgary Flames, you know, the NHL schedule is 82 games, and uh, most of the games that the Hitman player are concentrated in the weekend, which I actually like that because it allows me to follow more games this way and I actually go to a few more games with my, you know, my work schedule now. So anyway, let's look ahead to Episode 7 here. Game 31 is on going to happen on Sunday, December 9th. The Calgary Hitman will take on the... Canada's Blazers at home at the Scotia Bank Salem, 2 p.m. puck drop, and this is the uh, the Brit Teddy Bear Toss game, and uh, I'll get back to that uh, when and what that game is all about, and uh, you know maybe we're trying to have to reclaim some pride here, but that's game 31. It's usually the biggest attendance game of the year, and uh, it's definitely for a good cause here. What what else may happens? So then game 32 which is happening on Friday, December the 14th. The Calgary Hitmen will be taking on Dylan Dubé's junior team, the Kelowna Rockets. This will be at the Scotiabank Saddle Home, 7 p.m. puck drop. And then the next night on game 33, which will be Saturday, December the 15th, the Calgary Hitmen go up the road here to Edmonton to take on the Edmonton Oil Kings at the Rogers Place, 7 p.m. puck drop. So... Another Belle of Alberta in store here. And then on game 34, Sunday, December the 16th, the uh, Calgary Hitmen go back down the road here to come back home to take on the Lethbridge Hurricanes. And this is actually uh, an evening game at uh, Scotia Bank Salem with a 7 p.m. buck drop here. And then they go on a little bit of a break here with Christmas happening and Boxing Day. So game 35 won't be until Saturday. Friday, December the 28th, the Calgary Hitmen go back up the road again to take on the Edmonton Oil Kings with a 7 p.m. puck drop at the Rogers Arena. And then to wrap up my next six-game segment here with the Calgary Hitmen, game 36, will be Saturday, December 30th, the last game on the regular season when we're looking at 2018. The Calgary Hitmen will be hosting the the Vancouver Giants, James Malm's team, that's the player we got from, James Malm, the Vancouver Giants at the Calgary Hitman, 2 p.m. puck drop at the Scotiabank style dome here, so a little bit of afternoon delight here, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, wrap up looking ahead to episode 7 here for my Calgary Hitman and 6 here. So anyway, let's get back to the uh, teddy bear toss game here, which happens on Sunday, December the 9th here. It's one of the biggest anticipated games of the year for the Calgary Hitmen. As uh, the Brick is sponsoring it, the, you know, the Alberta-based furniture dealer. And what they said they were going to do is that they're going to donate 25 cents for every bear tossed to the Alberta Children's Hospital Foundation, which is always a great cause. It's ultimately where all these bears go to, various children's charities, and, you know, actually the Salvation Army recently, uh, you know, they do this every Christmas, put a call out about, you know, not having as much donations when it comes to financial or toys, and I know the times are still tough here in Alberta, and not everybody, you know, can afford to give, or, or maybe more people are still relying on these charities, but, uh, you know, since 1995, when the Calgary Hitmen were established here, Actually, 347,948 bears have been tossed. So that's incredible over 23 years. And the bear to toss happens after the first goal of that game. So whoever scores for the Calgary Hitman tomorrow afternoon, Sunday, December 9th, they'll, uh, I'll call them, they'll get credit with the bear 
the bear goal, which uh, I'll highlight that in the next episode. And, uh, you know, the seldom holds over 19,000 fans and uh, usually you almost get a, a packed house for this game. So, uh, and then in past years, the Calgary Hitmen uh, wear their special Christmas themed jerseys that uh, usually they autograph and auction off for charities as well. So, uh, that's the gist of the teddy bear toss game. But there's going to be some personal pride here on the line here because uh, back in 2015, the Calgary Hitmen set and owned the world record with 28,000. 815 bears tossed and uh, however just recently here just last week I looked this up the Hershey Bears game the AHL team on Sunday December 2nd this you know just last week they actually set a new record they had 34,798 bears tossed at this game and according to the AHL game summary they only had 10,046 fans at this game so that basically uh, amounted to three and a half bears per fan here and uh, as they were making a call up for this teddy bear toss game they were hoping to maybe get 35,000 uh, bears tossed in this game so we can reclaim their record I mean ultimately you know it's the kids that benefit it's still ambitious to see uh, how how that's gonna work here but there's definitely videos on YouTube about uh, how what happens when uh, you know the goal happens and uh, all the bears get flying. I, I just gotta wonder how the uh, goalie feels. Uh, and the other th question I almost wonder is, let's say the hitmen don't score, what would they do? I mean, the goalie are almost in a rock and hard place. Like I gotta think of the kids, but gotta think of my team here. And then you know, if, if I let that goal in, I might as well get off the ice and go take a breather because you know it's gonna be, you know, quite a bit of time to clean up literally tens of thousands of bears here so yeah yeah that's that's basically the gist of the uh the teddy bear dos game so stay tuned in the next video on how many bears were tossed who scored that goal and uh how many bears are tossed and are they hitting back in the the record books for bears toss so uh anyway that's uh that's that and uh let's take a look at uh you know the scoring leaders here this is the Part of the, ep the episode where I look at the scoring leaders here for the Calgary Hitmen. And right now, Mark Kolestik is still uh, leading the way after 30 games. He has 22 goals, 13 assists for 35 points. And then second in team scoring is Jay Kriske. So after 30 games, he has 13 goals, 18 assists for 31 points. So we're both on a point of game parade right here. And then third in the league or third in team scoring is James Malm. Overall, in 28 games, he has 14 goals, 15 assists, and 29 points. But as a Calgary Hitman, he has 15, in 15 games as a Calgary Hitman, he has five goals, nine assists for 14 points. And then the fourth in the scoring is Caden Elder. This is the guy who got from the Swift Current Broncos first week of the season. Overall, in 31 games, he has 11 goals, 12 assists for 23 points. As a hitman in 29 games, he has 10 goals, 12 assists for 22 points. The round at the top five is Igor Zamula on defense here. 30 games, he has five goals, 16 assists for 21 points here. And then I'll bring up the goalies here. And every time I uh, bring up the, uh, you know, the... Uh, here on the uh, WHL, I have to like bring out all the columns here for uh, for goalies here, or well, especially the the important stats here. But uh, right now, Jake Minotin in 16 games played, he has a uh, 3.25 goals against average, 8.87 save percentage, and he's a uh, 7.7011. And then Carl Stankowski in 15 games, so both. Goalies are playing just as much here. He has a 372 save per goals against the average and a 879 save percentage and a 66 and 2 0 uh, record. And uh, when it comes to uh, shutouts here, uh, if I can find the uh, shutouts here, only Jake Manon has the the one shutout here for the uh, Calgary Hitman and Matthew Armitage. He, 
you played that one game at the home opener there, and you know he just has the one loss there. So uh, I'm gonna say both goalies, Jake Benotton and Carl Stankowski. I say right now, no one is really a clear-cut winner here, but it looks like they can count on both guys when it comes to back-to-back uh, -to -back night scenario here. So uh, you know that's my Calgary Hitman in six here for episode six. If you enjoy everything I do on my channel here. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Make sure you, uh, you hit like, subscribe there. I'm still have a little bit of remnants of the cold here, but I'm doing digital catch up here. So, uh, you know, get back on track here. To, uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and uh, uh, I'll see you at the next video. And uh, if you're following along for just Calgary Hitman, uh, you know, make sure you stay safe out there. You know, enjoy your holidays. Merry Christmas, and uh, I'll see you just before the new year here.